Allspire is a world steeped in the arcane. Magic is the lifeblood that formed it, holds it together, and forms the foundation of all life. The gods, so it is told, travel together across the cosmos, gathering the shattered remnants of other ruined worlds. When they found the right sun, they converged and used their divine arcane power to forge the remnants together into a single world, Allspire. The gods filled the rivers and oceans, tore the chasms and canyons into the ground, erupted the mountains, emptied their breath to give it wind and air, and covered its barren surface in the endless flora and fauna. But the gods struggled, beset with an urge to create something that fulfilled their divine sense of purpose. They created life, and thus began the first age of Allspire, the Primal Age. A time when the races of Allspire were young, feral, and unfettered. The gods remained amongst their creation for a time, though the exact length is lost to history. Conflicts between the gods wrought destruction on the land and its inhabitants, until an accord was reached, and the gods chose to keep their conflicts away from the mortal realm and in a divine one. Their creations, however, became proxies for their conflicts. In time, the Primal Age continued into the Lost Age, when the continent of Evergrad was a place of unrestricted magic and vast empires in near perpetual conflict at the peak of their civilization. Unbeknownst to them, unrestricted magic would be their downfall, with the rise of one exceptional arcane practitioner, a sorcerer named Selrock. History would call him the God Sorcerer, and his reign would be known as the War of Sorrows. The true origins of Selrock remain shrouded in the fog of history. His ascension to power in the north was swift, and efforts to counter him were easily rebuffed. The stronger he grew, the more war against him erupted. The exact time this period of contentious conflict lasted is also unknown, but its end was definitive. At the height of the last stand against him, when he was at the cusp of attaining godhood, the gods of Allspire returned. With an arcane blast that shook the foundations of the world, the gods smote Selrock from the face of all creation and returned to their divine realm. Unfortunate, for the age that followed was nearly the end of life on Allspire. Without the god sorcerer to control them, Selrock's monstrous minions and leaderless armies scattered to all ends of Evergrad. The races who fought him found themselves adrift amidst a nigh-apocalyptic world in which civilization was cut to its thinnest numbers. The Age of Ruin saw man, elf, and dwarf struggle to just survive. Monstrous beings, both large and small, roamed with impunity. Gradually, as the people of Allspire found increasing safety and increasing numbers, civilization began to grow again. The fledgling kingdoms and regions scraped together to survive against the possibility of extinction, only to fall back into the cycle of war. Kingdoms rose and fell, united into empires, and were overthrown again until unity through power was forced. The Age of Crowns saw the uprising of a collective of kingdoms, empires, and rulers, many of elvish birth, they called their coalition the Crown Pantheon. This new power structure was held by a fragile alliance of mutual destruction. A civil war by one or more of the crowns would assure mutual ruination and destabilize the power that had been secured. Rather than risk losing power, rival crowns held a tenuous alliance and instead focused their efforts on maintaining their authority. One of these methods was orders with shared members of the Pantheon. The Age of Crowns saw the rise of two such powerful factions. The Arcane Order, who used their zealous iron grip on magic usage in an effort to ensure another Selrock did not rise to power. And the Knights Valiant, an order of honorable knights who are without peer or rival. They strove to be a powerful, unified example for others to follow. When threats present too great for armies and mercenaries, the Knights Valiant answer the call. Through the tenuous alliance of the Crown Pantheon, civilization had a chance to flourish. Smaller communities were able to establish and thrive. Economies were formed and maintained. Conflicts still arose, 
but the long bloody wars were a thing of the past. Monsters, aberrations, and abominations no longer roamed freely, but retreated to hidden enclaves and strongholds scattered across Allspire, remnants of Solrock's reign. Caches of gold, magic items, traps, and horrors presented a unique challenge, lethal though they often were. Colloquially known as dungeons, these deep dark places proved a small treasure trove for those brave and hardy enough to enter and face the perils within, and almost overnight, adventuring became a lucrative though risky profession. Thus began the current age, the age of adventures. For 250 years, Adventurers threw themselves into dungeons, temples, crypts, abandoned forts, and into every dark place on Evergrad, in hopes of loot and glory. This was approved of by the Crown Pantheon, as adventuring helped clear regions of monsters who preyed on nearby communities. The Arcane Order approved, as it gave them a chance to catalog magic items and keep them out of the wrong hands. The Knights Valiant approved as adventurers of exceptional skill were cultivated to become future knights. Many of its ranks' most famous members were former adventurers. However, as the age wore on, the number of dungeons available to delve dwindled. Competing guilds turned to criminal enterprises when membership shrank. Some dungeons were raided more than once, leading to unnecessary deaths and no reward. Explorers scoured Evergrad for new locales, but the supply no longer matched the demand. What little adventuring could be found was put on hold when a new conflict arose. Orcs, driven out of the Phalan jungles, amassed a number too great to be easily defeated. Led by a cunning and ruthless leader named Warlord Thorgoth and his brothers, Warchief Gorvok and their Magnus, Kranach. Together, they led a campaign across Evergrad in search of a new homeland where the Crown Pantheon's armies would not be able to rout them. They frustrated the Crown Pantheon by evading militaries for close to 20 years. Often, when they engaged, they emerged victorious. The Orcs, through happenstance, managed to kidnap one of the Crown Pantheon's own, Queen Serana of Namaria, the only kingdom comprised of and ruled by humans. They vanished into the Pathbreaker Mountains and emerged into the untamed wilds of Dreadmoor, a valley almost cut off from the rest of Evergrad. This action spurred the Crown Pantheon into unified force, and they descended on Dreadmoor in a final confrontation that cut the orcs down by the tens of thousands. In one climactic battle, the orc wars were over. Namaria's queen was rescued, though not without issue. She returned to her husband, the king, heavy with the child of Warlord Thorgoth. That, however, is a story best told on its own.